We first met Bianca Bailey when she was just four years old. And back then, she completely enchanted all of us and the millions of viewers who saw her here on 60 Minutes. Bianca was born without arms and legs, and in some ways, her story was a sad one. We all certainly shed a few tears. But there were plenty of laughs too, because the Baileys are like that. Well, Bianca recently turned 18. Time, she agreed, for us to catch up on what's been happening in her life. And unfortunately, not all the news is good. But in typical Bianca style, she's not complaining. She's more determined than ever to triumph. Today is one of those rare ones for Bianca Bailey. She's not feeling sick and can hang out at the local mall. Be with her friends. Check out the latest fashions. This young woman's attitude to life is inspirational. Her capacity to cope with adversity, hard to believe. There are always obstacles in life. You always have to go around them. It's just a part of life, and there's nothing you can do to change that, so... When we first met Bianca, she was just as determined and so cute. <laughs> well, I'll tickle you. You're a cheeky old thing, aren't you? You're cheeky. I'm cheeky? Yes. What about you? Brett. You're a what? Brett. You're a brat? Yes. You're yes. not a brat. I am so... 18 years ago, Bianca was born with Australia's most severe case of congenital quadrilateral amputations. She has no arms and legs, and doctors don't know why. As soon as she was born, Bianca was put up for adoption. And that's where Margaret Bailey stepped in when she was nine months old. Extremely bright and inquisitive, as soon as she could speak, Bianca wanted to know when her arms and legs would grow. So I ended up taking her to see babies that were just born, to see that they already had their fingers, their hands, until she realised that, well, she wasn't going to get them. But she said the other day, I'd rather I had even an elbow. She said, I would like fingers, but even an elbow would do. Brings a tear to you. It does, right, it? yeah. And that was your reaction at the time? Yeah. I had to turn away. Does she fully understand um, what, what's really in front of her? I don't think so, although she's got a very mature outlook. How much do you think we need? All of it? Oh, yes. Two years after Margaret adopted Bianca, she also adopted Lucy, who has Down syndrome. How are you? Back then, the Bailey household included three other older children, who've now left home, and Margaret's husband, David. But soon after our first story in 1990, David walked out. Ever since, Margaret's been a single parent. That plate, $20. Why? What's, what's so special about Mum has given up a lot for me. She basically now doesn't have that much of a life, but she still wants me to succeed in everything that I want to do, which is very nice of her, very lovely. How long has it been for you that, since you've had an uninterrupted night's sleep? Oh, I couldn't really tell you, but probably the whole 18 years of her life, just about, since I've had any a really uninterrupted sleep. Where do you think you'd be today without Mum? I have no idea where I'd be. Probably not very far at all. Maybe stuck like in an institution. So in that sense, you're so lucky, aren't you? I am. I'm very lucky. Very lucky. And tell us a little bit about Lucy. Lucy. Well, Lucy's my sister, but we have like the normal sister love-hate relationship. I'm still the brains and she's still the hands. The Bailey girls, as they like to be known, make a formidable team. Do you need to buy anything today? No. No? I do. Organised and efficient. Can you slow down a bit, please, Mum? But unfortunately, these days, too often, headed for their home away from home, Brisbane's Royal Children's Hospital. And as if having no arms and legs isn't enough, in the past couple of years, Bianca's entire gastro-digestive system has slowly ground to a halt. It started off with just reflux, and then it started off with her colon not really working, and then she had the colon removed, and then her stomach started on the go slow as well, and she got to the point where she couldn't 
eat anything more. She's, I think she lost eight kilos in six weeks or something like that. There he is. Okay. Hello. How are you doing? Professor Jeff Cleghorn has been looking after Bianca most of her life, but as quickly as he comes up with a solution to a problem, others arise. Now the thinking is getting more desperate, with even the possibility of a very rare and risky intestinal transplant. I've floated the idea of, of maybe transplantation, that's a viable um, treatment option for, for various individuals. Whether it's a viable thing for Bianca re remains to be seen. Uh -huh. <laughs> More immediately though, food is the great concern. Eating is now virtually impossible and she has to be fed intravenously. Today's hospital visit is for an all too regular though minor operation to replace the semi-permanent needle that goes into her chest. You can feel every movement. Not of the needle? Mm-hmm. And really in the last year, she has probably spent as much time in hospital as she has at home. Yeah, just about that, yes. We've had a few six-week spells where she's had infections. From the, from the catheters and the needles going in to, yes, to feed her? Yes, yeah. Because she has to be hooked up, so it's accessing it all the time, yes. Until Every they night. get infections, yes. What's the white The white's mixture? the fat. It's called lipids, but it's the fat content of it. Not quite your hamburger? No, but they reckon the, the fat, I think it's cut down now, the fat in that top they reckon is equal to the fat in the Big Mac. So that's why she calls it her Big Mac. These are the preparations for Bianca's dinner. But Margaret is as much doctor as she is chef. From six o'clock every night until eight the next morning, Bianca gets hooked up to her food, if you can call it that. Do you, do you ever dream about what you'd like to physically eat? Yes, seafood platters. Oh, is that right? A big plate of seafood, like prawns, lobsters, all the yummy stuff. Really? Yum, 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 yum. But if they were put in front of you, would you be able to eat them? You wouldn't be able to digest them, would you? No, I, oh, I can eat them, but it just sits in my stomach and I bloat up and it won't actually go through. The news gets even worse. If the doctors can't fix Bianca's digestive problem soon, they'll eventually run out of access points for her intravenous feeding. And that means no food at all. She could starve to death. If you're not positive, you feel sicker than what you do when you are positive. So either weigh up the pros and cons and the pros come out. But doesn't it ever get you down? It does. I do have days when you feel really depressed and you're sick of everything and everybody and you don't want anybody to talk to you. But then you get lonely, so you come out and start talking again. My motto is never give up. And I have said this for as long as I can remember. For as long as I can remember, I Bianca's always been a great talker. And at this Brisbane Rotary Club meeting, she uses those skills to debunk some of the old prejudices. People presume that we have physical disabilities. We are deaf and dumb and cannot speak. People should never presume. I've had people come up to me yelling at me thinking I'm deaf, so naturally I yell back. <laughs> Bianca's never short of words and hopes to one day put that to good use here. So how long does it actually take to become Chief Justice? Oh, well. She's nothing if not ambitious. Bianca's dream is to become a criminal barrister and she's seeking advice from no less than the Chief Justice of Queensland, his honour, Paul de Jersey. And I think that's one of the great things about what you're doing. Uh, you're not only doing it, I suspect, for yourself, but you're going to be a great source of inspiration to many other people. Criminal barrister Bianca Bailey. Sounds so, good. That's exactly what I was going to say. It sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It does. Is it going to happen? I hope so. It better. I really, really, really want to be a criminal barrister. Why? Why? Well, I think because I really want to help people. While some things take a little longer to achieve for Bianca, there's very little that isn't possible. The computer's easy. Writing is a breeze. And like most teenagers, telephone texting is the preferred way of keeping up with gossip. But growing up has naturally had its obstacles. Oh. Well, let me, let me 
let me keep an eye on that. Okay. Walking has been a much strive for, though unattainable, goal. It's quite an array. It is. How many, how many legs and arms and hands did you have over the years when you were little? Well, there's more than that. Is it? Yes, but we sent some overseas to an orphanage. These are pretty cute. I know. I know. That was my first pair of legs with shoes. Really? With, yes. a, with sort of real well, shoes? Well, painted shoes. I don't know about the calves, though. They're a bit thick. Do you ever come to terms with not having arms and legs? Yes, you do come to terms with it. I've come to terms with it because I want to know what you do with them. They, they look, they just get in the way, don't they? Well, I'm pretty clumsy. Well, you just trip over them. You see people falling over. I don't know what you do with them when you go to sleep. It's bad enough just having short arms. What do you do with them when you're lying in bed? They're just there. <laughs> so you never ask yourself or wish? I do wish every now and then, oh, I'd like to do this. I wish I had arms or I wish I had legs to be able to go up here or I wish that I had arms and legs to do this. But then you think, oh, no, not really. It would make me different and from what I am now and I don't think I could put up with another change. So the chair's working today, is it? It is. Just squeaking right. a bit. Bianca's wheelchair is her arms and legs. It's way past its use-by date and urgently needs replacing, but costs the price of a new car. Well, the control brakes, the motors break, the up and down brakes, the tilt brakes, quite a bit brakes. <laughs> It's just another hurdle for Bianca and her 64-year-old mum, Margaret, who receive very little government help and make the best they can on Margaret's aged pension. She's my child, she's my daughter, even though she's an adult, she's my daughter. And you, there's things that you don't put on your children. You put on your peers or your partner, you don't put on your children. There's no way Bianca Bailey was ever going to let the world pass her by, and already she's achieved an incredible amount. But the truth is, her future is uncertain. So unfair for an 18-year-old with so much more to give. Just helping people would be good. See, that's very generous of someone, you know, who, who has faced so many difficulties yourself. But there are people out there who need help. And if others aren't going to offer it, why shouldn't I? I've had lots of help throughout the years, so it's about time I gave something back to somebody else. There's always people worse off, so I shouldn't be complaining about this. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.